Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. Uh, yeah, wow, what an absolute disgusting day. Then suddenly not so bad, but still kind of bad. Just a roller coaster over Friday. Now the reason today, by the way, in case you're wondering, so there's probably two things. Uh, so there's two things, I guess, that we should talk about. Number one is the fact that today was OPEX day, where essentially the easiest way to think about that is um, essentially there's just a lot of options expiring today. Like today was just like that Friday like of, uh, of the month where there's just an absolute obscene amount of options, you know, dollars worth of uh, options expiring today tends to create a lot of volatility, uh, which is, you know, whatever, it's fine. It is what it is. You know, it's not too... Uh, unsurprising and then the final thing is with elon i'm sure some of you have seen already how he got accused of like paying off uh, an anonymous girl that an another anonymous girl talked about it five to six years ago how he paid him 250k to like not talk about some sexual stuff happening some pretty messed up stuff if it, is it true is it not true that's not what we're here to discuss but nonetheless the point is is that article was out obviously you know regardless if it's true or not you know still it's not good news uh and you know and, and just all of those things combined uh made tesla today quite um quite volatile and also quite uh quite painful i, I think at some point it was down like 10 percent, if not even more so that's pretty bad now compare that to the nasdaq and the qqq so the Nasdaq and the QQQ, the SPY and the QQQ, uh, SPY essentially flat, actually was pretty red too, I think it was down like 2% and somehow recovered, which is ridiculous, like what is this? Uh, and then the QQQ, similar movement here, you can see uh, pretty much almost flat as well, down only just 0.36%, which isn't too bad as well. So obviously relative to the market, Tesla severely underperforming, right down 6.4% to $664. Now, guys, Unfortunately, I mean, I was right about one thing, at least. I was right about there being a big move coming. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't the move that I wanted to see. Uh, yeah, definitely was not where I wanted to see the, the price action go. I'll be completely honest. I definitely thought it would go up. Fortunately, we went down. Nonetheless, hey, it was a big move. We were half right. Better than being completely wrong, I guess. It is what it is. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of sucks. But uh, so essentially, like I said, you know, the levels to watch out for if we break 680 would be um, around this kind of six. So that I have my line at 665 to 670, which is where we ended just under, uh, followed by 650 and around 630. I pretty much said very similar levels to the seven uh, in the 700 range. Just slap a six in front of the seven, in, or slap a six instead of the seven, and you're essentially dealing with you know more or less kind of similar uh, similar things here. Unfortunately, we did drop below uh, this 680 level, which again, I've said several times before, you know, pretty much this whole thing breaks apart if we drop below 680. And look what happened when we drop below 680. We continue just absolutely falling off an entire cliff. And it is what it is, right? That's that. That's what happens. That's what happens when you break these kind of major supports. Again, kind of back when up here when I was talking about, you know, 972-ish roughly, how I was talking about that too. I'm like, you know, if he breaks 972, we're going to fall pretty aggressively. Similar similar concept right here. That's essentially what happened as well, right? Once we finally did break the 680, we fell off a cliff, right? It is what it is. Uh, it's fine. You know, a massive volume today as well. You can see 45 million volume uh, on a red candle. Thankfully, about half of the candle almost got eaten back up near the end of the day. We did have an end-of-day rally, which isn't too bad. But nonetheless, not good. So that being said, though, that being said, though, one thing I actually like to see on this daily right now, which is good, again, it's only the start. This is only the start of it. This doesn't mean that that's it, we're time to rally. For all we know, we can definitely still have a bounce, and I'll talk about that soon. But one thing that I'm starting to see on the daily now, which I'm liking, is a bullish divergence on a daily. Now, daily tends to move a lot slower overall compared to like, you know, an hourly chart. So you're not going to see this kind of movement like necessarily instantly. But the fact that we're starting to see a bullish divergence on the daily is good. That's telling me that we are finding, or at least we're approaching a bottom. We're getting close. It doesn't mean this is the bottom. We can still go lower, but it is showing signs that it, the essentially the light at the end of the tunnel, we can see it. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. That to me is what this means. So what is this? What does this even mean in general though? Like why, what is this bullish divergence on the RSI? So the point again, I've talked about this several times before, but if you're new or you forgot, whatever, need a reminder, refresher. Essentially, what it means is the fact that even though Tesla today had an absolutely horrendous day and we fell to pretty much levels we haven't seen for like a long time, all the way back since July of 2021, so essentially just a straight up a year ago, we're pretty much back to where we were a year ago, right? So the fact that we fell down to that level and made a fairly sizable lower low. The fact that we did that, but the RSI, again, and when I make it bigger, you can see 
So this level right here, where our RSI was essentially death smack on 30, was back when we were uh, first initially dropped to this kind of 680 level, right? Now that we dropped all the way down to 632, which is the lows of today, but the RSI made a higher low compared to here, where we were sitting at uh, 680, that is the start of a bullish divergence, aka the stock price making lower lows, but the RSI making higher lows. Usually the stock price follows the RSI, which is what it's called in this case, a bullish divergence or the opposite being a bearish divergence, which we did talk about before. This to me is a good sign. Now keep in mind, this is only literally just the beginnings of it. This is just the first major real signs of it but it's a start it's a start and i think this is where we can start potentially building up uh essentially the foundation the base somewhere around this level and then start moving overall upwards uh, and start you know eventually start making a trajectory back to the upside and having bullish momentum again that, again i want to be very crystal clear this doesn't mean it'll happen tomorrow or i guess monday next week not even the week after for all we know it could take literally another month or two but it's a promising start and it's essentially again the light at the end of the tunnel right so that's a good start i like that what i don't like is the candle the candle is quite hideous a lot of weakness being shown and that of course is not good so moving on to the one hour chart let's take a look here very quickly and you know inspect what we, you know just the movement essentially so you can see we're still like consistently touching and hovering this bottom yellow line right so we start up here touch the top bottom top bottom and we almost went to the bottom so until we can essentially I would say at the very least recapture 680 ideally 700 which i do think will come back up i do think there's a decent chance that we you know we might retest the 680 first maybe 700 if we're lucky maybe monday maybe tuesday um <clears throat> somewhere i would say early next week i wouldn't be surprised to retest 680 maybe 700 but until we can ideally reclaim 700 and start holding it we're gonna probably head lower or at least we're gonna not head much higher uh, soon. So that's essentially what you want to be looking for. You want to be looking for something like that because unfortunately, even though the daily is looking good for the RSI, the one hour RSI just got completely destroyed. Uh, I mean, you can still argue, I guess it's, this is like a tough argument to make, but technically back when we were sitting all the way at like 822, 820, technically we didn't drop as low as that RSI. But that being said, we did drop lower than this uh, section over here when we, were, uh, when we were still chilling around, you know, around 700. The fact that we dropped lower than that, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not very happy about it. So that is not ideal. So we, the, the stock is gonna essentially need potentially more time to kind of find, you know, a footing here, which is fine. But again, essentially, again, the main thing you wanna look out for, if you wanna have any sense of, you know, when the hell are we going back up to like maybe 800, let's say. The very first thing you want to look out for, again, reclaiming 680, ideally 700. Until at least one of those two levels is reclaimed, I wouldn't even think about 800. Um, but once those one of those, especially both, are reclaimed, then we can start talking about a potential bounce up. Now, another possibility is, well, what uh, can we go much lower? Uh, how and if we can, how much lower can we go? The answer is actually quite simple. Now, the main thing you want to look out for, again, like I said, is these, these two levels, which I still think we'll, we'll retest. If we reject then we're probably going to either come back down and most likely retest this for a double bottom at around 630 or we'll break and if we break below 630 we're absolutely coming over down to 600 that is most likely just going to happen and if uh we're very unlucky we might even retest the bottom line of this yellow line again and if we do that well that's not going to be very very fun that'll be quite uh painful and that'll probably take us to like the very low 600s if not to um the very about high 500s potentially as well right so you can see i have another line drawn here the next major support under 600 i would say is around 550 which isn't something that you probably want to hear but it kind of is what it is now if we're lucky you know there's again a decent chance that we might find a potential bounce around 575 somewhere around here there is some support and resistance right around this kind of 570 to 575 level that definitely can be uh, another level to watch so we'll put a line there just in case i'm just trying not to have too many lines here because then it just there's just too many lines and it kind of gets messy, but we'll put a line there too. But all these are like major levels. So essentially, if that were to happen, that would essentially line up with this yellow line. And then we potentially can fall down all the way to like, let's say 575 fairly quickly, uh, maybe even lower. Uh, and, and that would essentially be where we would go if that were to happen. Now, again, it's very possible that we don't. And I, again, I, I don't think we will. I really don't. I really don't think we'll break under 600. Um, 
but man with this market and this these kind of sell-offs and this volatility it, it's really hard to just say for sure because like for all we know another hippies can come out on elon and the stock can fall even further right you can't predict those kind of things like you couldn't predict this hit piece coming out yesterday uh after hours or late in the day yesterday you just can't you can't see that coming unless you have insider information you literally have no idea that's coming and bam it came out and it hit tesla extra hard compared to the market which you know it is what it is that's just kind of sometimes part of the game you know it sucks some parts of it are absolutely rigged but it is what it is right you, you can either complain about it or you can you know find a way around it right that's all you can do so that's essentially what i'm seeing there but either way guys so for next week again ideally what i want to see is i want to see a retest of 680 and if we're lucky again 700 and that is the most important thing again i want to see how that ha uh, reacts if we break above 680 i want to see 700 if we break above 700 and hold great this might be the actual low uh for now maybe we'll go lower in the future but for now i definitely think you know we can ignore these levels and start thinking about where we can run up to However, if we don't break above 680 and especially 700, or if we do very slightly, but then kind of collapse right back under, you know, fairly quickly, and we can't just, you know, consistently hold above it, then I think at the very least, we're going to come back down to probably 630 uh, and retest that. It really depends on how it moves, because for all we know, we can also develop a bear flag somewhere to kind of this bear flag, but it wasn't the best bear flag. This to me looked more of a bull flag, but it just collapsed under, which is unfortunate, which happens. But it really just depends on how the movement goes. But again, the major thing I would watch out for next week, again, are the 680 to 700 levels. And to see how we react to that and if we get rejected or not but either way guys that's it for this video bit of a brutal day but you know keep in mind you know it is what it is you just don't look at your portfolio honestly i'm, I'm not even looking at my portfolio yeah i'm also back holding like yeah i was wrong it is what it is i'm not going to be sad about it i'm not going to bitch about it i'm not going to complain about it it is what it is um i have more cash in the bank account if i need to as like a reserve cash if you will where if we really too truly like plummet down even further like to 600 or lower that's when i tap into that into those funds but until then i'm um, again my actual portfolio money is all in so i'm along with you guys for the ride i'm not worried i don't really give a shit i'll be completely honest it is what it is you know the, I, I don't lose sleep over this let's just say that so yeah that's it for the video guys let me know what you think down below and i'll see you for the next one peace actually wait sorry before we go though, actually i want to take a look at the macd and the weekly we didn't do that i like to do that i completely forgot to do that let's take a super quick look at z macd so we'll go ahead and close that um uh, macd macd so macd honestly not looking as bearish as i thought still straight down on the uh, on the lines uh definitely setting a bit of a lower low but honestly relative to how hard we felt not that bad i think i thought that would be a little bit worse so that's not too bad i'm actually pretty okay with seeing that and the last thing i want to see actually the last two things i want to see are the bullion bands you can see we're right back at the red line bouncing directly off of it which is great and uh i wanted to see the weekly let's take a very quick look at the weekly here yeah, the weekly candle is not looking great. Keep in mind, guys, by the way, I forgot to mention, uh, we have a pretty much a shit ton of uh, red. So Tesla, of course, getting, you know, not as much red candles. You know, we had a green one here. These are pretty fat red candles, though, I'm not going to lie. But if you take a look at the indices, it's just red, 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 red. Same with the QQQ. Red, 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 red. That's seven, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven red uh, weekly candles in a row which is like pretty ridiculous so it is what it is uh you know we'll see at some point we will get a pretty aggressive bounce because you know that's just what happens in bear markets you get very aggressive rallies and then we'll see what happens with those but either way that's it for this one thanks for watching peace